That was not smooth. Seattle, Washington, where hipsters come for coffee, where Amazon built its home and all of its profit, and where Blue Ribbon Mastermind, which is my group of seven, eight, and nine figure e-commerce business owners has come to gather one more time this year and get together and share what's working in our businesses. It's a really phenomenal group of people and I'm gonna take you around, show you a little bit of what's going on and interview some of the speakers about what is going on in their lives and in their businesses and hopefully you can learn from that. So let's take a look. My name is Nehal Kazim and I run a Facebook ads agency. Facebook ads are going to get really hard um, and any kind of platform that you're going to do uh, and any kind of media you're going to do is, is going to get harder and the reason for that is be just because technology is getting more complex, algorithms are getting more complex and the opportunity here is being able to kind of go one level above and figure out what is what's actually working strategically and why because everyone in Facebook groups and courses and masterminds is so much tactics sometimes that you don't have the patience or or the maturity to go up and see what what's the opportunity here. And so for us, we're moving a lot away. We do Facebook ads, but we're moving away and we're working on the creative side instead of the optimization side, because that's the thing that was working. That's what we used to do. It's not having the same effect. So we have to kind of steer the ship in a completely different direction. And the opportunity here is most people hate change. Embrace that change so you can get ahead of the market and get ahead of your competitors, because everyone else will be in that state until it's too late and then they'll switch and you'll already be six months, 12 months ahead of them. I am Brett Curry. I'm the CEO of OMG Commerce. One of the first things we talked about and, and what we advise our, our clients on and talk to people about in the, in the courses that, that I create with Ezra is that you should always start with retargeting, right? Get your retargeting campaigns built out properly first and that gives you the, the structure and the ability to scale with other channels and with other campaigns. And so we like to build retargeting on, on all three of the channels, YouTube, Display Network, Gmail ads. And we build those campaigns for product detail page viewers, cart abandoners, and then in a lot of cases, all, all visitors as well, with different bids and different strategies kind of for each, for each level. My name is Pilar Gerasimo, and I'm an author and journalist. One thing that I think our culture has done to deserve people who are health seeking and to discourage them is insist that it's all about diet and exercise. For a lot of people, diet and exercise is actually not the best place to start, and particularly with really busy, heavily overworked people. Many times, an easier intervention is to begin with a little meditation, a little bit of a break in between big tasks, getting a little more sleep at night, just transitioning in and out of these active periods of your day. In presenting today, I talked about ultradian rhythm breaks, for example. This really fun biohack of just taking about a 20 minute break every hour and a half to two hours. And I think that that kind of suggestion, it's not a difficult thing to do. It doesn't require immense amounts of willpower. It's not like going on a diet or committing to some incredibly difficult exercise routine. It's just treating your body with a little more respect. And again, even if you don't want to respect your body, my hope is that people who work in this field will really care enough about their brains and understand your brain power is connected to your body and your brain is a part of your body. So learning how to just treat it with a little more respect and a little more care can be the entry point into a much healthier way of life without a lot of resistance. One of the things I like the best about Smart Marketer and about Ezra's value system is really building health into this curriculum. It's a professional curriculum. It's aimed at people who come here to learn the technical ins and outs of their industry and to understand more what works and what doesn't. Well, one of the things that doesn't work very well is having your body and mind break down on you as you're trying to achieve your bigger professional goals and your fiscal goals. I think we're really coming to the point where understanding that burning yourself and other people out is not a good long-term sustainable strategy for a successful business. And I think that the research supports that not sleeping, not eating, not moving, not taking breaks, these are things that cause inflammation in the body. And runaway inflammation is what's at the root of virtually every significant chronic disease that we're facing right now.
My name is Laura Palladino, and I'm the lead social strategist at Boom by Cindy Joseph. 2019, moving into 2020, we're focusing for our content and our social media is adding more of a edutainment kind of feel, adding more fun back into our content strategies and really connecting more with our audience. I think a lot of people don't do as much content marketing. Um, content is still king. Uh, getting people to read your blog posts, emailing them on your blog posts, really bring them into what you're about as a company, reminding them what our viewpoints are or have been. Um, we've noticed the same open rates on the email. We've noticed the same click-through rates um, on something that on a piece of content that went out a year ago. We're getting the same amount of engagement on it now, um, which proves that it's still relevant, they still want to hear about it. And then adding that new stuff in, it just gives it kind of a fresh feel um, as well. So they're, they're being reminded about what we are about, but they're also seeing where we're moving forward to. I think a lot of people focus a lot on uh, creating new stuff, adding new stuff into their content bank, right? But you've already created all of this good stuff. Why not reuse it either in a different way or literally just reuse the same thing, change the subject line um, and bring it around again. I think people focus a lot on creating new stuff um, and you already have that bank you can pull from. My name is Anthony. I am the CEO of livebearded.com. So at Blue Ribbon today, I talked about uh, how we have built an irresistible culture at Live Bearded and really created an experience that led to a really passionate community of beardsmen and how we've really used our community to facilitate the growth and expansion of the company. You know, I'd say the, the one thing that really helps our community stand out from the rest is as a company, we really focus on how we can add value to our customer and how we can specifically meet their needs and meet their needs in a way that's very different than our competitors. When we began the process of creating the company, we really looked at the marketplace and said, what's available in the marketplace? What are our competitors offering? What needs and what value is our competitors adding? And how can we add more value and in a different way that really allows allows us to create an irresistible experience and then ultimately create just fans that love the brand and want to be a part of the culture. Yeah, in my experience, most business owners are really focused on the transactional side of the relationship. Um, you know, in my talk, I shared a, a quote from a buddy, a friend who messaged me and he said, you know, most people are so concerned about the money that they're trying to make, they forget that the money that they want is on the other side of the people they serve. And especially in a digital business, right? In the digital economy, we see followers and fans and comments and subscribers. We don't see James and John and Ezra and Anthony. We don't see people on the other side. And so um, I feel like just in general, and we're, we're responsible for this too, we make this mistake at times too, we see the, the customers as just numbers and figures on a screen instead of actually people that have problems and that are turning to us for solutions. And so I think just constantly reminding ourselves as business owners that we're serving people that are really coming to us to find a solution to something that they're dealing with in their lives. My name is John Grimshaw and I'm here at the Blue Ribbon Mastermind in Seattle. When I was invited to speak, Ezra said, I'd love for you to talk a little bit about customer lifetime value. This idea that in a business, you have customers that come back and buy from you again and again. And over time, that all adds up, right? So someone who buys a product from you for $50 today, in two to three years, they might have bought three or $400 worth of products. And understanding this customer lifetime value helps you make smart investments with your time and your money today, because you can think about what people are worth in the future. Well, customer lifetime value is a really good concept, but I actually find it to be too imprecise. So I don't really recommend people use that metric. Instead, there's something I like to look at called customer value velocity. And what customer value velocity is, is this idea that as someone comes into your business as a customer and begins to buy products from you multiple times, you will find that over a few months, you can track roughly what their value is. So after 30 days, I can say a customer is worth on average $46. Or after 60 days, a customer is worth on average $54. And once you understand not just the lifetime value of the customer, right, this abstract number that might come three to six years later, 
and instead start to think about the time from starting to be a customer all the way through the beginning of their journey. You can start to spend more intelligently on traffic platforms. You can start to change the offers that you're making on the front of your business and really start to shape your predictions and your plans for your revenue around this number. So when you're using customer value velocity and you know that after 60 days, customers are worth $54, like in my example, you can say, OK, I can go into the red. I can lose a little bit of money in the front end because I know that after 60 days, I'll have made an average of $54. So you can spend up to $54 to acquire a customer. And once you start to think about that, where you're able to know what the value is going to be in the future, suddenly you're able to scale your business faster, to spend money more effectively because you know where things are going. And so as a business owner, when you can start to say, not only I know I can spend up to $54, but I know I'm going to make roughly $1,000, $10,000 from these customers that I bought last month, you can start to think about your cash flow better. You can start to figure out what products to put on the front if you look at that data not just by when they came in, but what they bought first. So customer value velocity is this really, really cool metric because it helps you as a business owner start to bring data about how money is coming into your business into decision making you make about paid traffic, about the offers you have, and about the cash flow of your business. And so it really helps you kind of elevate your game and get out of this living month to month, stressing out, and instead start to think strategically looking down the line at what's coming. So there we have it, Seattle, Washington, Blue Ribbon Mastermind, we're done. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to learn more about Blue Ribbon, you can go to smartmarketer.com forward slash, that might have been a backslash, mastermind. Um, hope to see you in the next one.